thousand is a grand, so it was a grand son. Now, David, I really enjoyed the acronyms that you shared with us yesterday, and I, I think I was begging you on the show for some more. <laughs> Have you got some more today? Well, I will deliver. And, in fact, I'm going to deliver with a twist, uh, as you'd probably expect, because I'm going to talk about backronyms tonight. And uh, that is a portmanteau word, or a blend, with back and acronym. And the word was created in a competition, would you believe, the Washington Post uh, ran a competition for all readers to submit uh, their idea of a creative blend. And one of the winners that I did love was giraffiti, which is graffiti in a very tall area on a wall. <laughs> but the other winner was backronym. And in fact, it's become such a winner, it's become a word. And backronym is where uh, the word exists, but an acronym is created um, post-dating the word. Uh, oh, I see. So... So somebody actually decides that they like a particular word or that it might have useful initials and then they find the words to fit those initials. Uh, an, an example is uh, the word golf. Uh, a very sexist uh, version of golf is gentlemen only, ladies forbidden, which obviously Kari Webb has completely kiboshed. And then another one is wiki, which we know is from the Hawaiian word for quick, but a lot of people believe or have backronymed, if you like, making it a verb. Oh, yes. That, uh, thank you for doing that, David. <laughs> is what I know is, uh, could possibly be uh, where Wiki comes from. That's a backronym. Now, you can play this game at home with uh, people's names. For example, I was mucking around with Cerner, and uh, I have come up with solving equations rapidly, nailing answers. <laughs> or more crop. <laughs> that is great. I've got one for you. Not to mention accurate. <laughs> Meet our ringmaster extraordinaire. Conundrum referee, our faithful timekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice indeed. Well, I will try and come up with something for you by the end of the show. <laughs> Good luck. All right, the brain cells ticking over. Backronyms, lovely stuff. Thank you, David. Let's look at our scores. Rosemary's on seven. Greg is on 17. Let's head into our next letters game. And, uh, Rosemary, what would you like? Um, can I have a consonant, please? Thanks, Rosemary. C. And another consonant? K. And a vowel? A. And another vowel. I. And a consonant. F. And another consonant, please. H. And a vowel. E. And a consonant. C. And another consonant, please. And last letter, B. Thank you, Lily. 30 seconds on the clock. Rosemary? I didn't. You didn't? But how... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but how many did you come up with? Just four. Four for you, Greg? A five. Five. So what was your four? Eight. And Greg? Beach. Beach. No problem. It sounded like it might have been a challenging mix. Yeah, I'm with Rosemary on this. It was uh, <laughs> not very generous, this one at all. Beach was a great get for five. There is a six here, and that's chayak. That's a word that my pop used to use for jeering or chatting. C-H-I-A-C-K. It's a slang term. Uh, it sounds like it should be a beverage with a little bit of cinnamon in it. <laughs> it does indeed. Five points to Greg. Let's see if we can come up with a slightly more generous mix of letters this time around. And, uh, Greg, would you like to choose them for us? OK, Richard. Can I have a vowel, please? Thanks, Greg. I. And a second vowel. E. And a consonant. F. Another consonant. T. Another consonant. G. Another consonant. N. And another one. L. Now a vowel. I. And another vowel. E. And I'll start the clock.
Greg, was it a mix with uh, more possibilities for you this time? Uh, yes, I had uh, seven letters. Seven? That sounds better. Rosemary? Seven also. Seven for you too. Well, that certainly was a better mix. Let's start with yours, Rosemary. Listing. Listing. And Greg? Singlet. Singlet. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely words, David. Good words. Uh, singlet gives me tingles, which is an anagram. <laughs> uh, singlet, uh, listing, good sevens. Um, now, with an extra G, we could have had jelly nights for ten, but of course, working with the nine... Uh, stealing is a possible eight, as in stealing oneself, and that's uh, S T E E L I N G. Lovely words, nice mix, and great scores for Greg and Rosemary. Seven points each, so uh, Rosemary's now on 14, Greg on 29. Well, let's hope we're all in the mood for a little more maths because it's time for our second numbers game of the night. And um, Rosemary, your selection again. Thank you. Um, Lily, can I have two large numbers and four small numbers, please? Thanks, Rosemary. Two large and four small. And starting with the smalls, one, ten, one, four, fifty, twenty-five, and the target number is 899. Thank you, Lily. 30 seconds to get there. Numbers. No. Oh, bad okay. luck. Bad luck. <laughs> Greg, what about you? Uh, 900. 900, so just one off the target. Well done. Tell us how you got there, please. Okay, 25 times 10 is uh, 250. 25 by 10 is 250. Multiply the 250 by 4 to get 1,000. By 4 is 1,000. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. Multiply that by the 50 to get... By 50 is 100. 100. Take and that away. Subtract that away to 900. 900. So uh, just one off the target, Greg. Well done. That one, just finding that one, did you find it? I did, but that was very impressive, Greg. I, um, I like the way you did that. <laughs> but uh, I do have 899, and I'll talk you through it. Um, 10 minus 1 is 9, by 4 is 36. Now, 36 by 25 gives you 900, and um, take away the one, 899. Nice work. Well, well done to Greg as well, uh, as Lily said. Great solution. Seven points. So Rosemary's on 14 and Greg is now on 36. We'll head for another quick break and another word mix for you. Bail nuts. And the clue this time, home for a wobbly horse. See you very shortly.